Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode and season of my F122 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 103 today for the beginning of season 7. If you guys did miss the pre-season video uploaded just yesterday, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one to get clued in on all the changes going into this season. Because a lot has changed. Louis Hamilton is back in this series since he retired in season two. Sebastian Vettel has now retired and become a team principal of his own team. We've had a whole load of regulation changes, which has changed up the pecking order. And we've had a load of very interesting driver transfers going into this brand new season. And of course, one of those transfers is my return to my own team team after taking a season out to drive for Scuderia Ferrari, one of the official F1 teams in the game. We are now back in our own custom team and it's good to be back. It's going to be nice to step back into a car that's custom made for myself and my teammate. And we step back into our car as a double world champion and still the reigning world champion of course, winning back-to-back -back championships from season 5 to season 6. But before that, there were four very long seasons where we did not win a championship. It took us a real long while on this game. And this season, doing that again is going to be very difficult. Because look at this R&D chart. The R&D regulation change has jumbled up everyone. Audi Sport, Repsol Haas, Golf Porsche Williams, the top three teams on the grid. Vettel's brand new team, Vettel Rennsport, they're in the top four on paper in the pecking order. Ferrari and Aston Martin McLaren down at the bottom. Aston and Ferrari were in the title fight last season and all of a sudden they may be relegated to back markers fighting for the wooden spoon. It really is all change here and I'm kind of getting the feeling that if we are to try and secure a third championship it's going to be ridiculously difficult just like it was when we failed in season 4-3-2 because there are so many many more teams now above us in the R&D chart. Drivers who are so motivated, highly focused. So at the moment it's a big unknown really who's going to be quickest out the blocks but I guess we're going to find out right about now as we go on into the race weekend for the Australian Grand Prix the opener of this season and we exit the pit lane for the very first time back in our own car and it feels so so good. It feels like when you put on the perfect suit, the perfect pair of jeans it just fits. It feels right. It's good to be back in Arab Archer Racing. And here in Q1, we're going to get our first taste of how this new car is driving with the chassis and the aero reset and a couple upgrades maybe missing from a maxed out version of this car. We have a bit of work to do then, R&D wise, and we also might have some work to do in terms of just getting used to the car once again, because this does drive a bit differently to the Ferrari I was used to last season. You know, last season we spent most of it getting used to a very over Theory Ferrari, a little bit punchy in the front end, whereas back in this My Team car, the front end leaves a little bit to be desired with that usual understeer that we've been used to most of this game with the My Team career mode car. So having to get back into the swing of that and trying to, you know, shuffle the car mid apex, but we do pretty damn well in Q1 at least with a pretty decent lap time to get us up into P4. Hamilton P12. Remember, Lewis Hamilton's AI, he's not raced for four seasons now that has reset his focus but I'm wondering if there might be a few cobwebs for Hamilton's AI to get back into the swing of things I don't know really how you know an AI is affected by so many seasons and races not actually participating what that does for their actual attributes per se so we'll see how it goes with Hamilton but already you're seeing the results of that major regulation change both Aston Martins knocked out one Ferrari as it's Schwartz that drags the Ferrari somehow into Q2. Verstappen is the one that struggles with his new slower Ferrari car and he's out the session. So that's going to be a very interesting dynamic to see how that plays out. Maybe Verstappen already feeling unmotivated by where his car is now compared to last season when we were his teammates. And you may have noticed one McLaren did actually make it through Gasly dragging the slowest car on the grid.
way through into the second part of qualifying, whilst Russell, in the improved Mercedes car relative to where they were last season, is knocked out. His new teammate, Albon, does make it through. So already we're seeing some team inter team battles playing out and some of the new drivers in their new teams are doing better than their established teammates maybe with that revised focus and kind of more energy into a new outfit potentially and uh, that might be the same for well both myself and Hamilton really a double whammy Hamilton returning to the sport myself back to the team so both of us will be motivated to do well here at the moment we go quickest of all but that's sadly going to be a bit of a bluff and smoke and mirrors because now we've not done very well on this second flying lap everyone has gone quicker locking up oversteer understeer everything under the sun in the last sector and we don't go quicker on our second lap and we are knocked out just about in p11 in our first qualifying of this season in q2 there hamilton gets the car into the top 10 shootout but we're knocked out the highest position outside the top 10 p11 but it's uh well confirmation that R&D chart was not lying to us at all. The Audis are up there, both Gulf Porsche Williams, both brand new Vettel Rennsport cars. And then the two Andrettis have done amazingly. Logan Sarger on his F1 debut here in this series on this game for us is in P10 and the Andretti alongside Sonoda. Really showing the improvements there for the second American team in this sport. But uh, yeah, for us, frustration and Hamilton on his return to F1 outdoes us at the first time of asking. So we've got work to do. Clearly, the landscape of this grid is has been turned on its head since last season, and that's massively exciting, but means we have work to do to get this car where we want it to be to fight for those top positions. So let's go to the grid then for Sunday. We know where the car is roughly, and we have work to do. We're going to have to fight tooth and nail to get some good points tomorrow. Let's go to Sunday. Months of rumour and speculation all come to an end today as we return to racing for the opening event of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. We go racing today then in the state of Victoria where the drivers have 14 corners and 3.28 miles to navigate at an average lap speed of around 120 miles per hour. The close proximity of the barriers make accidents inevitable and recent history shows us that a safety car is not at all out of the question. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole with Kevin Magnussen alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Oscar Piastri, Mick Schumacher, Lando Norris, and Drogovic, Sainz, Sonoda, Hamilton, and Logan Sargent. The owner driver, Liam Lawson, Alex Albon, and Gasly, Schwartzman, Hulkenberg, Theo Porcher, and Fernando Alonso, Russell, Verstappen, Ricardo, and Sergio Perez completes our grid. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Natalie Pinkham is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. They've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Well, well, when it really mattered in the final part of qualifying, then, if you saw that grid sequence, Audi did not show up. It was Gulf Porsche Williams that took all the plaudits. It's a 1 2 lock out there for the Williams team. Leclerc alongside Magnussen. Where did that pace for Audi go in the last session, I wonder? Now we've got the race. They've got to try and solve that for themselves. We've got to try and solve this problem of being behind both Andretti's in P11. Hamilton only could uh, split the two Andretti cars though so clearly the Andretti's are actually pretty damn quick and they may be a nuisance today for 
for us. Overcast conditions, thankfully though, doesn't actually look like there's going to be any rain for this opening race, which is probably good for us in terms of data gathering, learning what the pace of all the cars are like, because in the rain, that really could have masked where the cars actually are. So we'll get a good understanding of where we actually stand in terms of race pace today then, if it stays all dry. Hopefully it does and just gets sunnier as we go on through this race. But um, yeah, we've got our work cut out. We've also got, you know, not too shabby Red Bull and Mercedes behind me. Liam Lawson and Albon in their new respective teams. They'll be motivated as well. So we've got a lot of fighting on our hands here. And there's going to be fighting up the road for Audi, Vettel, Ren Sport, Williams, Haas as well. With Piastri doing so much better than his teammate Hulkenberg. He got knocked out in Q2. Piastri up there on the second row showing Repsol Haas do have some good pace. It's going to be a very... Very interesting one, and I, for one, cannot wait. The fact we've got so many different drivers and new drivers and new teams up here in the top 10 is so exciting. And it's time to see what they're really made of as we go to five red lights. Season 7 begins, down under, lights out, and away we go for the Australian Grand Prix. Slow start for Logan Sargent, electric start for Albon, who gets round the outside of us to get us into turn one. We're down to P11 again. I thought we got one position. Albon nicked it back off us. So Noda now getting overtaken by Albono, who's looking very strong in the silver arrow. Ahead, it looks like the Haas of Piastri has made a double overtake on both of the Williams cars to maybe lead this race as we go round the outside of Sonoda. We get both Andretti's who started on the medium compound attire. A lot of us on the softs and the tyre advantage of starting on the softs is clear night and day because Piastri on the softs leads his home race for Repsol Haas. Mick Schumacher in the new Vettel Ren Sport car on the softs up to second. The Williams cars both starting on mediums. They've had a howler. Leclerc down to third. Magnussen down to P6. Long term into the race though. We'll be interesting to see if that uh, medium tyre start is going to pay out for those cars that have opted to go for mediums because of course it's going to go longer into this race. These softs won't last very long and we will feel the tyre wear sooner rather than later as Logan Sargent slumps to P14 showing that even though it was a great day on Saturday that lack of experience showing at the start of this race and look at that Aston Martin and Ferrari squabbling at the back so odd to see is now Lando Norris in the Audi trying to overtake Leclerc to get up into P3 Audi versus Golf Porsche Williams two titanic brands going at it behind Dragovic holding back Kevin Magnussen very well and there's a train forming all the way down to P10 now and we're tail ending it now looking at the rear wing of the other Audi Sainz who just doesn't look like he's as quick as Lando at this stage of the race uh, for most of last season Lando had Carlos covered it seems it may be the same again this season and actually can we have a go at the Spaniard maybe as we go down this straight and curve in sector two using a bit of battery as well to try and go round the outside very close to the wall very close to Carlos Sainz's front end but we do make the overtake work up into P9 but we tighten up our line and that allows Sainz to get a run back on us the Spaniard so aggressive we squeezed him I thought we squeezed him out the racing line but no he still went for it we kept our cool made the switch back overtake and we're back into P9 Sainz struggling for a bit of pace here. Of course, he's on the mediums, to be fair, so I was always probably, well, I should be overtaking him on the softs, because myself, Albon, Hamilton, all the soft runners, we have to make the most of it, because this tyre will wear out eventually, and one man who did make the most of it was Oscar Piastri. The home favourite gets such an amazing getaway off the five red lights here on this replay. Round the outside, the double overtake for Piastri. What a move! by him, Schumacher up to third place, and then he goes for the move, I think, on the outside here, yeah! So the Williams just, you know, they did so well on Saturday to get the front row lockout, but they did not switch on those mediums at all. Even Lando at least maintained 
some sort of pace and actually overtook Magnussen. So both Williams cars with some tyre warm-up issues. But now Piastri under threat from Schumacher maybe. So those two are going to have a battle on the soft tyres. And that may just help out the medium tyre runners. Because they're going to surely wear out the softs even more by battling. As now you see the Audi of Norris trying to overtake Leclerc in the Williams. But um, yeah, so clearly some tyre warm-up issues for some teams. And so that's quite interesting, of course, with the regulation change. The chassis got reset. I have no idea if all these teams have adapted those tyre upgrades as we try and sling one down the inside of Albon. Now in the Mercedes, we uh, were used to battling Albon so many times when he was in Red Bull in uh, you know previous seasons, but now in a new team and looking raring to go, but we are going to have the pace to power past him just before the quick left and right to get up into P8 with the fastest man on circuit with the clean air we had as now Mick Schumacher goes for the move gets the move done Schumacher leads the Australian Grand Prix Vettel Rensport in the lead of a Grand Prix only four laps into the season they've really done their homework over the winter Mick Schumacher is loving this new lease of life under his mentor his team principal Sebastian Vettel he leads the way Piastri down to P2 and and Norris has got past Leclerc and the Audi now is showing its pace a bit because Norris looks like he's getting away from Leclerc already and looking to chase after the top two as we're now trying to chase after our teammate Lewis Hamilton whilst also doing a bit of defending from Albon both of us with DRS the Mercedes having a look around the outside ahead of Carlos Sainz and then just outside the top 10 Hulkenberg weighs off his, his new teammate Piastri outside the top 10 so he's got a bit of homework to do to try Try and close the gap pace wise to him but can we eventually get Hamilton because I feel like he's struggling now for his tyres there was a bit of a wobble for him, a bit of a wobble for me to be fair as both of us have been now feeling the tyre wear of this soft compound but we've got a bit more race pace than Lewis, can we make a move, he goes defensive into turn one on the outside, he defends very well places his car perfectly to make it really awkward for me we have a second bite of the DRS he's going to awkwardly park the car car right in the middle of the circuit and Lewis pulling out all the stops to stop us getting past at this stage obviously in the season no point for team orders or anything like that you know it's fair game and clearly also I'm still also struggling in the same amount as him in terms of my tyres so it's fair game as now we cut back to the top and Lando Norris is going to sling one or true try to sling one I really thought he was going to go for a move down the inside there but the Audi is trying to get P2 and ruin the party for Piastri who did so well at the start but now I wonder are those soft tyres hurting him because now the medium tyre runner of Norris is up into P2 as we try and go on the outside of Hamilton in sector 3 first gear needed to try and turn the car around the outside but now we're side by side I don't want to squeeze him too much he's our teammate we have to give him a bit more racing room than we would others but now Albon has got his nose down the inside with the proximity arrow there and Hamilton remains in P7 and showing he's maybe not lost the art of defending ending in Formula 1 as Piastri now nearly goes straight on it's a really bad lock up and the Australian is down to P5 this is a disaster now for Haas what is going on with them are the tyres just off or is the Haas specifically just really bad on its tyres because to be fair even though myself and Lewis have got a few oversteer moments we're not falling down the order like he is so maybe that's one characteristic we're already working out here in the season the Haas team of very bad on their tyres they may be very good at switching them on but not too great at keeping them in check as we are now going for the overtake, third time lucky a lot of battery usage on the outside, up into P7 ahead of Hamilton, meanwhile further up the road onto a brand new lap and now Magnussen after struggling on those mediums is coming alive a bit, overtaking Piastri, it's more so Piastri just downfall as he is now down to P6. Hulkenberg remains in P11, so... 
Yeah, that Haas car was so promising at the start there, but where's that race pace gone? It just looks like Haas, they've got it all wrong. They should have started on the mediums now looking at this because clearly they cannot keep their tyres in check because Schumacher, remember, who leads the race, he is still on soft. So it's not really a soft tyre thing. It's more a Haas thing because Schumacher is still doing very well to be in the lead, but that may just change. And as soon as I mention it, because Norris slings down the inside and this is a bit more like it for Audi maybe Schumacher does so well to remain in first place and uh, delay this overtake but it seems like it might be inevitable as Audi's true race pace comes into life Lando Norris round the outside leads the Australian Grand Prix for the first time for Audi Sport and now potentially that means Leclerc could also go chasing after Schumacher and elevating Williams as now it's three wide for Hamilton Sainz and Hulkenberg Hamilton and pinched it in the middle. He's down to P10. Maybe now Hamilton is feeling a bit of tyre wear now. Of course, a few seasons out, so maybe not used to how these cars handle, you know, how the tyres develop through. And uh, to be honest, is it just me or he looks quite slow actually on that straight? So I wonder if there's actually maybe a bit of an issue there for Lewis because I was expecting a bit more from him. He's 100 rated with our facility upgrades, but I definitely felt like he looked quite slow off the last corner there versus the Audi. Meanwhile, behind, some uh, extravagant fighting going on between Fernando Alonso, Russell and Schwartzman for the wooden spoon down in P15. The two Andrettis struggling for a bit of race pace now. Sonoda P12, Sergeant P13, but they're, you know, again, locked into a battle with the Red Bull of Lawson ahead of them, just like they were at Abu Dhabi last season. For us, it's time for a pit stop. Look at those tyres. They're at absolutely cooked so this season it's going to be a little bit harder on our tyres potentially for everyone with uh, some of the upgrades reset and myself and Piastri come in but the fact we've caught up to Piastri and he was leading the race just shows you and tells you all you need to know about the Repsol Haas tyre wear on that car so they're going to have to sort that out ASAP otherwise it's going to be no use of having a quick car if they can't prolong their tyres in the same manner their rivals can as we are now out in P17 and the job is to try and chase after and overtake Piastri if we can and it looks like we, we definitely can do that we're sticking with him through the quick chicane DRS available to us and we're gaining and gaining on Oscar Piastri. He defends the inside. We're on the outside. We're going to try and uh, just roll the car through around the outside. Easy does it. But Piastri puts up, the, uh, up a defense. And we just can't make it happen in the next right-hander. So we're going to be patient now through the last two corners and try and set up a move maybe into turn one as we see others now coming into the pit lane for their first pit stop. A lot of them soft tyre runners. Piastri will move to the inside. We go to the outside from a bit of a fake to the right to the left. And we're going to send Oscar the wrong way. Now, who gets DRS? I think we do still technically on this straight. But Piastri is determined to try and defend and he actually has a bit of a kamikaze dive I saw it coming in the mirrors so he darted out the way because I was about to take the apex but that would have ended pretty damn badly if I'd actually turned in there because Piastri was determined to try and stay in the fight but um he has been overtaken. He's down to P10 and potentially now will fall behind to uh, Albon. Haas, no pace. This guy was leading the race and he's now down in P10. And Albon and the Mercedes might even close up to him. Meanwhile, all the others left out on circuit. All these guys started on medium. So this is where their advantage is maybe coming through now. They're able to go longer into the race with better race pace. But eventually, you know, those of us who just pit will be going quicker. So they've got to eventually make that pit stop and choose the right time. As Dragovic oh, tries to get Leclerc for P2. Porsche Williams versus Vettel Rensport. And uh, meanwhile, Lando Norris stretches out a 4.5 second gap in the lead, flexing the muscles of the Audi race base. As there goes Al Bono in his new silver arrow. He's overtaking Piastri. This is just a calamity. I mean, to be fair, Hulkenberg's P13. So it's actually just Piastri himself as an individual. He's really gone down the order. Hulkenberg seems to just have stayed put where he was. So 
questions have to be asked. I'm sure Hass will be debriefing after the race about that. But now we finally have pit stops for those guys on the medium tyres. Oh, no! Oh, Hamilton has crashed into Carlos Sainz into turn one. Hamilton without a front wing. He's going slow. And I think he might just be pulling up and retiring after that damage. He sustained too much to carry on, in his opinion. And he's going to come through on the right-hand side on the grass and park up. It's a really frustrating return to Formula One for Lewis Hamilton. He's out of the Australian Grand Prix. Such a shame for him. And our team is now Liam Lawson has a huge shunt in Sector 1. The Red Bull's out. And that shunt is going to bring out the full core safety car. Because that was a hefty one. He lost the front tyre, lost the front wing, a lot of debris. And uh, unfortunately, unlike in real life, there is no red flag feature in the game. So the FI can't bring out a red flag for this one. You know absolutely they would have if this was uh, real life and there was a red flag to bring out in the game. But alas, it's just a safety car that bunches us all up. But this safety car actually changes the dynamic of the race because I think a lot of us on the medium tyres that did soft to mediums, we were maybe potentially thinking about doing a two-stop but now we're going to get underway on lap 21. There's only eight laps left. We may as well go to the end on these medium tyres. But there's definitely a bit more tyre wear now this season compared to last. So it's going to be a struggle. And I've really struggled to get the tyres up to temperature on the restart. It's a howler of a getaway onto lap 22 as uh, Leclerc barrels into turn one about half a second ahead of me. And we are just struggling to get the rear to comply with this. And Albon is only three tenths behind us eventually. Lap 23, finally, we get a bit of semblance with the car. We're feeling quick. And, you know, we need to use these medium tyres to good use to chase after all these hard tyre runners before my mediums start wearing off. We need to make the most of them, especially now with the cars bunched up and maybe fighting. Schumacher leads the way. He's got Lando Norris on this safety car restart somewhere, and he leads the way now ahead of the Audi car. But he's going to have a pretty poor lockup on those mediums, and the hard tyre runners are licking their lips a bit because as we go on through the laps, these mediums are getting worse and worse but now because of all this fighting it's bunched them all up and all of a sudden we're now side by side and going round the outside of a Williams of Leclerc up into the top five for the first time in this race but look at that oversteer pushing me towards the right hand side I didn't mean to do that but the tyres just screaming out every time we touch these curbs and clearly Mick Schumacher was feeling the same thing because he's lost first place now and look at that time gap 1.3 to Norris who pulls it out on the hard tyres. They're working better now as the tyre wear creeps up and up and now Felipe Drogovic, Mick Schumacher's teammate down the inside. The two Vettel Ren Sport cars nearly going side by side through that entire quick chicane. Magnussen now having a go on the right hand side but Drogovic with the dive bomb to make it three wide. They all make contact with each other and here we come swooping through to pick up the pieces. How we ended up in P4 here now. These guys are fighting each other so much that we've been allowed to close in and get involved in this fight but look at the amount of corrections I'm having to do every corner and now Dragovic is right up my gearbox he's going to pull out to the inside we squeeze him into turn one will remain ahead but it's just a, a matter of time I feel before Felipe maybe overtakes us again because I am feeling the rubber wearing out on these Pirellis right now is it's oh it's a bad mistake for Leclerc he locks up and loses a position on Albon rather than gaining one on Dragovic who lives to fight for another day and can recompose and chase back after us as now we see Leclerc with DRS trying to re-overtake Albon after that mistake he made on the outside Leclerc goes Albon on the mediums is now down to P7 there's a pattern here every medium tyre runner is now getting slower and slower and the hards are the better race tyre. Signs up into P9. Sonoda in P10 for one point for Andretti and Ricardo 
If you noticed early in the race, he was down in last place. Ricardo's had a blinder of a Grand Prix to go up from last to P11 in the Red Bull Ford. Meanwhile, up at the front now, back to this fight for P4. We're defending down the inside. Drugvich, though, going the long way round, squeezes us, and we just get oversteer at the wrong moment. As I wanted to keep it side by side, the rear end just steps out, and I can't do anything. Those tyres, they're done. They're done. If there wasn't a safety car, absolutely most of us who started on soft. 100% would have had to do a two-stop here because now we've got that orange indicator on the bottom right. Leclerc now looking for a move. We break early, going for the cutback, getting on the power a little bit earlier than Leclerc. But do we have the speed to re-overtake him? Because the Williams actually has DRS somehow still, even though we have DRS as well on him. As we go, dance it on the outside, roll the car through, and we do get the re-overtake done, thankfully, because that was a bit of a risky move, breaking early into turn one but it's worked out for us and we are back up into P5 but that may just be the maximum we have to accept today is there's a yellow flag bit of dust oh Leclerc's off Leclerc's into the gravel he's had a shocker in the dying laps Leclerc's made a huge error and now all of a sudden Ricardo is up into the points from last place in the Red Bull Ford and this battle between the Andretti and the Haas is for the last points and Leclerc that's a really bad mistake there was nothing going on with him he just just had a bit of an oversteer and snap and just understeered off into the gravel and he loses so many positions. He actually gets double overtaken by the two Aston Martins of Alonso and Perez. So uh, yeah, real bad day in the office for Leclerc on his debut for his Williams team as we now watch this fight. Ricardo diving down the inside to make it three wide between him, Piastri and Sonoda. And Sonoda comes out on top. The Andretti is up into P8. And now the two home favourites, Piastri and Ricardo, they're fighting to be the supreme Australian today. P9 or P10. Meanwhile, Logan Sargent is fighting the two Ferrari. Absolutely unreal. Rookie debut fighting two Ferraris. One of them is a double world champion in the form of Max Verstappen. As Sainz, I think that was, or so someone was in the pit. I think Gasly, sorry. Gasly in the pit. No, Piastri as well. Piastri's pit. He's had to do a two-stop. So the man who was leading the race at one point is now going to finish way down in P16. How times change and times may change for the two Vettel Ren Sport cars because Drogovic goes round the outside on lap 28 with one lap to go coming up. Up into the podium position, Schumacher just can't hold on with those medium tyres and Drogovic is hard to eventually get him up into third place. But it's Lando Norris who has been dominating this one. He's pulled out a nearly five second gap to Magnussen, but Magnussen has done a number. He's had, to, to be fair, low key, Magnussen's AI, can we talk about this? He's actually been doing bits in this series. He's had so many strong teammates, Leclerc the strongest of them all, but he keeps just pulling up results for Williams in the last three seasons in this series. He's going to get a podium to start off the season. Leclerc down in P15. Meanwhile, for us, we are P5. We're going to have to accept that, I think. And Albon is just about hanging on and trying to accept P6. He's done so well for Mercedes versus Russell who's down in P10. Sainz really poor from him to be down in P7 whilst his teammate dominates and shows so much pace in that car and Logan Sargent, what could have been? He nearly could have got points on his debut P11. He's still holding off the Ferraris and also now Fernando Alonso is in that train behind Logan Sargent. Unreal stuff. So some real big winners today but the biggest winner of them all is Lando Norris for Audi winning down under Audi take the first victory of the season it's going to be Magnussen in second it's a 3-4 for Vettel Ren Sport in their debut in Formula 1 and we're going to hobble along for P5 with some very very cooked tyres red icon on the bottom those tyres were done absolutely done but it's a top five finish in a very chaotic race. We've done very well there under all the circumstances. But what an insane first race. A great race then and a fantastic victory here at Albert Park. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, 
We could talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those that we've witnessed today. They've been winning fans the world over with their brilliant driving, showing that they're a force to be reckoned with out there on the track. They'll certainly be building on that fan base after today's excellent result. Well, what a podium. What a podium. Things have very much changed from this time last season. Audi on the top spot alongside Williams and Vettel Rensport. No Ferrari or Aston Martin in sight. And Lando Norris, well, he almost gets revenge, really, because he was leading the Australian Grand Prix, remember, in season six until I overtook him. And then Alonso got him for P2. So it's revenge for Norris down under. He makes up for season six's Australian Grand Prix by winning season seven's Australian GP. And uh, what a topsy-turvy race, though. Some big stories in there. Disaster for Haas. You know, where was their race pace? There was no race pace for them. Even Ferrari and Aston Martin finished ahead of them. And at one point, Piastri was leading the race. So big question marks there. They have to solve that. It's a shame for Liam Lawson because he was running really well. But Ricardo on his Red Bull debut gets points. Sonoda gets points for Andretti. Big points for Vettel Rensport. Big points for us, to be fair, because we were struggling a bit on those tyres and we did well to actually keep up with everyone and make the most of that second stint. But um, yeah, overall, I think the biggest winner is just all of us who got to watch that because that was really entertaining. There was so many different battles going on and they're all kind of all different to what we had last season. That R&D change, the regulation change, has really mixed things up and has fully changed everything, which is great to see because, uh, you know, sometimes there is a worry, even on the F1 game, where the same teams are still up there. But... The, on this year's game, you know, the, it has its issues for sure. My team, not a lot of new features, etc, etc. But one thing that has been for certain, the R&D and the amount that these teams are changing season to season has been there. And hopefully that carries over to the next game on F123. But um, what a fantastic first race then that has resulted in. If you have enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. If you're excited for the rest of Season 7, let me know down in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.